all the way through there. <laughs> Ten four. Yeah. I get to yeah. cough sometimes. That's what I start bringing them. Then everybody else wants one. So I'll figure out bringing a pocket. Hey, folks, yeah. welcome back to the Trailer Park Show where we are back with another new episode. And uh, You're right. It, that sign is a little <laughs> the wrong color. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but the blue shirt is showing up a little bit. Well, we may have to move those signs. If <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, signs got to go. One, one of the things, unfortunately, with with uh, signs got to go. With blue screens is that we have, um, yeah. yeah, different out coloring. So yeah, uh, Parker, we may have to move. I have to move but here, those. We're, we're back with a new week. It's green. It's kind of green. Yeah. yeah. You just couldn't see. You just couldn't see Zimmerman on there. So. You can see Zimmerman. Yeah. Uh, well, you know the bad thing about this is it makes me look like a chameleon. It's changing colors when he gets on TV. That's not a good thing. <laughs> changing color. You don't want a politician to change his colors. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, when you okay, no, you when you say that, no, anyway, go ahead. It. She's talking about the trailer up there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. But we're back with a new show. We have um, James Slow Pokey Ritter. We are. We also have welcome back uh, Michael Cargo from Central, Central Texas Gunworks. Uh, glad to have you back. Uh, by the Ooh. way, thank you. Thank you for running. Outstanding job. We hope you can Ooh. do it again. Yeah. Get you we to have, win. We uh, have Don, Zim Don Zimmerman, who's running for in the runoff for District Six in Austin City Council. Also uh, to the next. Uh, is next to me is the lovely uh, Miss Marilyn Jackson, and of course there's me. So hello, everyone. <laughs> professor, welcome, welcome. Rush Limbaugh, Latino Rush Latino Limbaugh. Limbaugh. It's Professor Latino Limbaugh now. So. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Yeah, well, long welcome. story in that one, but it, it's it's just gonna be a blast. So uh, Gavino will be back next week or a week after or something. <clears throat> anyway, he's he's, he's, taking out there. he's taking care of some stuff with his uh, with he's his taking immigration papers. So. Taking a break a little bit. <laughs> Pretty much, you know, you know how that thing with immigration papers is. Oh. That's the ongoing joke. <laughs> hey, got check his well, that, that's the ongoing he joke. He doesn't have a card yet, does he? He's no, no, no. I, since you brought it up, I was hoping we could uh, talk about that issue. I think Cheryl no, Cole was in the news too. talking oh. about a, an ID card, municipal ID yes. card. Maybe we can talk about that later. We, we can. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah we, it's one of those running jokes that we have with Gavino when he went to Mexico to deal with some stuff with. With maybe back across the border. Yeah, we, like we kind of joke around that you know he's taking care of immigration stuff, so. Mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> Do we want to let Cargill speak a little bit about his time? That's right. What happened? <laughs> City council race, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, How'd you do? I mean, we know how you did, but yeah. we yeah. were yeah. we got killed. I tell you, you came in third from the we bottom. We got killed. <laughs> but that's okay. No, you came in third from the bottom. There were some people underneath you. Oh yeah, yeah, but uh, it was just low turnout. Low turnout. Yeah. Undervote, wasn't it, too? What yeah. was the undervote in yours? You know, people that voted for governor and then they just quit. Yeah, it was pretty, yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah. I, I think people just forgot to go all the way down to, all the, way to down the bottom. To the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just one of those things. Switching from, you know, the city council race being a whole different, you know, election all by itself back yeah. in May or mm -hmm. something like that versus mm -hmm. doing with the, the general election. So hopefully we will educate our voters and, and get them out next time. And you're going to try again next time. You always know what I thought, uh, where you, you should have been running. But nonetheless, that's for well, some yeah, other time. Well, or if we would have stayed home, you know, after that, two days later, you know, we could have had a, a little bad incident here in Austin. So. Oh, yeah, you did have a... Uh, but we didn't stay home. We, we, we picked ourselves up, and we went to work. 10-4. Because we had a guy that walked into the gun store, oh. decided he was going to, he wanted to go over to the hospital. Uh, to the St. Davis there and, and shoot everyone in the hospital. So, mm. so you know what the moral of the story is, right? What's that? Go to Seton. Go to <laughs> <laughs> right. well, well, obviously this guy was looking for some help. If Seton doesn't own it. He, he, was, yeah. Yeah, he, was, he was really begging for help because he went to the hospital. Huh? They let He's going to walk in a good shop, shop and say something like that is begging for help, all right. And they let, yeah. him, they let him out of the hospital because they didn't have enough beds. Mm. Wow. Because they didn't have enough beds? They didn't have enough beds, so they let him out of the hospital. Oh. So then he walks from the hospital to the gun store. How, how can we relate yeah. that to a city issue to hit our candidate up about? Mm. Well, we can. Well, we can bring that up in just a bit. Yeah. But here, here's the next plan: Cargill for mayor. Cargill for mayor. Cargill I like for that. mayor. I, can't run I like that. Him. Oh, they, okay. You run then. for mayor? But that's just. All right. Well, we'll, we'll have to talk, okay, we'll terrible. have to talk about that one later on. So, oh, so sorry. you're gonna have to. So you're gonna have to move to District Two or District Three, <laughs> and then run for city council there. So I'm just, I'm just that, that's just a suggestion for you. So. <laughs> you can always rent my cast, but I don't think I, I want you to run against my Democrat lawyer that I just got elected there. Do you, Garza? The oh. first Latino and uh, Latina, and she went out right. Yeah, my poor old buddy Edward didn't do her the darn. You yeah. think you Sorry did bad? 
<laughs> Ed, Edward, Edward is? Edward got shellacked. Uh, the secret agent man got shellacked. Yeah, uh, Lee. I mean, he was taken to the shed. Really bad. Uh, it was a, it was a really weird. It was I think it was a really weird campaign. Hmm. Well, it's not quite over yet. Dom Zimmerman's still running. Woohoo! I'm still in there. We have a few other. Yeah, we have a couple of runoffs, but most we importantly, do. we have uh, District Six. Quite a bit, actually. Except, we do. Except for uh, someone backed out of the race, Chris. Yeah, Riley. Chris, Chris Riley Riley gave so up. Yeah. Or, I have or a or comment though, about that, but because we're on TV, I'm kind of holding off on that. Oh, I'll tell no, you about no, that. No, later. I thought that was no, the time no. to issue a comment. Oh no, no, no. Okay. no. It's <laughs> a trailer park show. Give it. Trailer park. That's right. Dish it on out there. I'm gonna be respectful to everybody and and just leave out. That that one is. Yeah, things said here have been used against us in the past. <laughs> yeah. Wired minds want to know. Exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk more about that later on. You're, you're going to love the comment. But. All right. Going to go off air with that one, huh? <laughs> exactly. Okay, so there's, uh, you know, what did you guys think about Robert Thomas coming in third in District 10? Because I think most people expected he would make that runoff. He's the one who spent all that money. A lot of money. Oh, a lot Who's of that? money on he that. He came in third? Robert, Robert Thomas, Thomas came in third. The airline in pilot or something like that, right? No. Lawyer. No, he's, he's an attorney. attorney. You, oh, just, right. that, um, you know what? You know what hurt him. Prop, prop one. Mm. People still remember what happened with Proposition One. Hold with, on, with he was the, on 2012. You're talking about the UT Med School, mm -hmm. the subsidy for the UT Med School exactly. in the backs yeah. of taxpayers. That thing that, was that thing was so bad. I had uh, doctors. You know, we were running the Travis County Taxpayers Union fighting mm -hmm. that thing. I had Obama voters, Democrats, who were doctors. They came out against Prop 1, put yard sign, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I had Republicans pushing pushing Prop 1. You know, go figure, there, right? There was a financial, um, there, there was some money involved in that whole thing with UT and everything else. So, yeah, so yeah big business was involved in that whole thing. Plus, um, from, what I, from what I understand, there was some problems with some of the party um, alignments and people that were going to be supporting them or not. And that kind of hurt them as well. Yeah. yeah. So, but more importantly, let's talk about you, Don. You know, so you're running, you're, you're, uh, so you had an interesting race. With, oh, oh, before very, we, very interesting before race. We did, for some people who, for some reason yeah. or another, been been on a different plan, don't know who you are, or what you've been doing. Maybe yeah, you what the, on yeah, who you okay. are, what so you've been doing. You were, you were a, a, a taxpayers union. Taxpayers union, taxpayers union, uh, way, way back, way you back. You go way back. Uh, cause I we go way back, yeah, uh, 2003. Anybody remember the Travis County Hospital District? Yeah, New yeah. property tax yeah. election back in 2003. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's when I really kind of first cut my teeth on a big race. But before that, I got elected to Canyon Creek Municipal Utility District, right, in 2002. Okay. So that was, a, that was a big deal, too. So that's when I got involved there. And then right after I got elected in 2002 to my Canyon Creek mud, uh, we, uh, we sued the city of Austin for illegal taxes. Yeah. And that was a big Shame deal. Shame on you. All these lawyers oh, man. Mm. Oh, man, that was tough. That was tough. I don't know how, how far you would get into that, but no, we'll I've, been, I've been fighting this stuff a long, long time. Are, long, long like time. That. Well, if you go back, I lived in Houston for 13 years, and I was a graduate of Texas A&M, Texas okay. Aggies. We need to whoop around here. We don't have any <laughs> Aggies. That's okay. I know all the Aggie jokes. You know the Aggie jokes, okay. Yeah, what, do you, what do you call an Aggie first day on a job? Boss. Uh, okay. <laughs> Aggie, no. run the land, <laughs> uh, longhorns on it. You know. <laughs> you go ahead. Uh, yeah. Well, no, you know, when I graduated, uh, uh, you know, I had a bachelor's, and then uh, what happens at Texas A&M, th after they give you their final exams, you have to pass the Aggie joke test. Mm. And if you fail, uh, you have to stay longer. I had to stay two more years because I failed. <laughs> oh, you but go. you know what mine was? Uh, you know, uh, years ago, uh, the Aggie farmers were complaining about uh, how they are having trouble raising chickens. <laughs> and so the Ag Engineering Department got involved. They did 10 years of research. You know, they finally concluded... The problem was the Aggie farmers were burying their eggs too deep. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> there you go, man. Okay. Well, well see, you know how to, why I had to go to grad school. That yeah. one didn't work. So, so Don, for those what, persons that didn't get a chance to vote, uh, why don't you go ahead on and let us know what, what, what area encompass, encompasses your... District 6. Oh, we uh, yeah. up the screen, yeah, we, we have a screenshot far, of that, but it's the northwest, is, northwest corner okay. of the city. It, it goes... Yeah, it's way up there. It's way up there, but it actually starts Ranch Road 620 down by the Mansfield Dam, believe okay. it or not, way down there. Mm -hmm. And then it runs up 620, takes in those communities like Canyon Creek, where I am. It takes in River Place, okay. you know, next, close to the 3M. Mm -hmm. It goes up to Avery Ranch in the far northwest corner, so it goes into Williamson County there. Oh, okay. And then it comes back down uh, 183, kind of on the Austin side of Palmer Lane, mm -hmm. all the way down to Duval and Balcones Woods around there. So it's oh, kind of okay. like a, a crescent shape, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. You know, a little crescent moon, sort okay. of, and it's all twisted like they do with gerrymandering, you know. 
<laughs> but that's where that's where it is. It, it has the largest uh, land mass, largest land area, because it's got a lot of open space. We have the balconies. No land fills. Are, no land fills there yet. No. <laughs> But we have the BCCP, big open space. A lot of people are worried about wildfire risk. Mm -hmm. You remember what happened in Steiner Ranch? Yeah. Well, that's right on the edge of District 6 to the south there. People are afraid of this stuff, right? You, you get a uh, dry summer, somebody starts mm -hmm. fire out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's no, there are no roads. There's no way to get into it. Mm -hmm. And if it happens at 5 o'clock in our gridlock traffic, fire trucks aren't going to get there anyway. You know? yeah. So we got some issues out there. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things you're running on? What is your platform? Well, I had a lot of credibility as an anti-tax activist, and everybody's yeah, had enough. Yeah, we didn't actually finish your bio. You were, uh, you were then more than just uh, the taxpayers' union. I ran for state rep back in 2006, and I learned a lot. I was in the Republican primary for House District 50 back in 2006, and I lost. Uh, there, was, uh, there were three people in the race. I got in the runoff, and I lost uh, in the runoff. It was pretty close. I think it was... Uh, I think it was like 53, 47, you know. Mm. So I, you know, I did okay, but mm. not, not really. But that was a tough race to lose. I spent a lot of money on that, and I learned okay. a whole lot. And the stuff that I learned back in 2006, uh, I put to use this election. And then I also worked for Ron Paul. Some people remember that I opened I that little that office part. out there in 183, Ron Paul Revolution, mm. in the summer of uh, 2007. Mm. Did a lot of work for Dr. Ron Paul. Learned a lot from that. And I, uh, I wrote a book, that little book called How to Swing Votes. Mm. And uh, by the way, I did follow my own advice in my book. I, I practice what I preach. So I, I spent less money, and I spent a lot more time making thousands of phone calls and door knocks. So that's how we The really only politician that ever actually paid me. Remember we all went to Fort Worth for the straw that year? For that straw poll? I remember that straw poll, uh, Ron Paul. That was a free bus ride. I get off. Yeah, free bus ride. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, and we got creamed in that deal too. All right? Didn't Duncan Hunter get more votes? Well, you than know, Ron I'm Paul not a real Ron Paul, Paul fan, yeah. myself, self, but anyway. But you know, he's a good man. Well, yeah. Got a lot of integrity, so and he's inspired a lot of people. Should you win this race, what are some of the things you want to yeah, let's get on to with the city council? All right, you want to get serious about this? Yeah, I have been. Right, we've been in a lot of forums, right? And one of the things I brought up early was the problems we got, like the traffic, the high utility bills, mm -hmm. they're symptoms. They're not the problems, they're the, they're the symptom. Mm -hmm. So in my observation, the real problem has been that the Austin City Government and the Chamber of Commerce have been running everything. Mm -hmm. I don't even think it's the City Council to blame for a lot of these problems. And the reason I say that is how many of your City Council candidates ran on a platform, sucked the lake dry, have the highest utilities in Texas, have the worst traffic congestion in Texas, mm -hmm. have the most unaffordable, the highest cost for our apartments and everything else. No one ran on that platform. Well, hold on no. here. You no lost one ran me on, on that platform. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, why would they want all that? It's unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. They don't want it. What they want is growth, 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 you know, Without subsidized the by the taxpayers. Right. They, they, you know, the, the Chamber of Commerce, I told you I've been fighting taxes. Yeah. In this 13 years, not once did I ever find the Chamber of Commerce against a bond. They're for all the bonds. They're for all the spending, all the increase in debt. Chamber of Commerce is for everything that's driving us out of our homes. You know, every, every, I'm working against the Chamber of Commerce. Why? Why doesn't the Chamber of Commerce work for the people that live here who can't afford these taxes? But they keep pushing the bonds, right? Everyone that comes up. They push the urban rail. <laughs> and you see how, how that went over here. <laughs> ah, that was, ter that was a good win to get it'll, that urban rail. back in. two years from now. Ah. Right. Uh, well, you ask me, if I get on the city council, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about traffic congestion relief. We're going to talk about civil engineering and getting our cars moving. You know, the people that are paying the taxes, especially ones in the suburbs, they're in traffic gridlock. The train's not going to do them any good, even no. if you put it in. Even if somebody gave it to us for free, it wouldn't help the problem out in the suburbs, you know? Who thought well, of this kind of but, idea? For all of us, <laughs> Never mind. It's, it's hard trying to travel in Austin. And it's not just the weekday going to work, it's on the weekends too. Weekends too, yeah. I mean, yeah. if anything happens here, which there's quite a bit that goes on, I mean, if anything happened on I-35, you can forget it. Forget it, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's forget it. crazy. Yeah. So forget the, thing about, the, the thing about transit is we have an, an amazing technology. It's newer than the trains we had in the 1800s. The new thing we have is called a bus. Right. So anything that train can do, the, the bus, bus can, can do move. faster and cheaper, and it has flexibility. You can reroute it when you need to. But, of course, the bus can't get anywhere because it's stuck in traffic along with the rest of us. Mm. Ditto for the fire and EMS, right? 
You've seen these guys sometimes in rush hour, they're having to do some dangerous stuff because, you know, the traffic can't move anywhere to let them yeah. through. So they're having to move over in the oncoming traffic and a lot of scary stuff. So we need HOV lanes added, dedicated lanes for uh, for taxis. Mm -hmm. We got Uber and Lyft coming along. We got uh, driverless cars. There's all kind of cool stuff coming, but we got to have road capacity. And I think HOV lanes should be a part of that. And we need to stop doing the stupid toll road stuff. You know what the problem with toll roads are? And you knew this was coming. They take the money from the toll roads, and instead of paying off the debt, they use it to subsidize a, a rail project yeah. or whatever else they have in mind. One of the reasons we have problems, right, with the highway fund is that they've been draining the gas taxes and sending it to DPS. They send it to the public school, right? They take things that should be dedicated road. funds and they start spending it on something else if it's allocated for that let it be for that let it be for that don't take that money and that's spend right. it elsewhere and that's, that's right. why we can't balance a budget right that's right now yeah. so anyway so there are some issues at the state legislature but i think things are going to get better there because we got some new hardcore people right, right? the senate the texas senate mm -hmm. uh remember was it donald huffines who won up in the dallas area he won a state senate seat so he knocked out an incumbent and there was uh, Paul Betancourt, right, down in Houston? Yeah. I know both these guys personally, and I, I believe these guys are going to make a difference in the Senate. They're, they're pretty terrific guys. So I think better, better stuff's coming. Well, there's a lot of work to be done. There is. There's a lot of work to be done. I mean, with, you know, with the new 10-1 and everything, um, I mean, it's going to take time for the new people to come on board and get acclimated to everything that's, you know, that needs to happen. I'm not sure how long will it take that we begin to see a change, a difference in what's happening, what, what needs to happen, well, especially I've been, with affordable living. I've been arguing uh, that, and, and encouraging the new city council, please replace the city manager. Let's start fresh <laughs> with the new city manager, right? That makes sense? You know, when a new, uh, you get a new athletic director co comes in, time for a new coach. You know, let's just, get a, let's just get a fresh start. And Charlie Strong came in with Steve Patterson, right, athletic director. Let's start off as a new team. So mm -hmm. I've been encouraging everybody, please, let's just, let's bring a new guy in. Let that be the thing that brings the new 10-1 together. Get these new city council members together, and, and we'll pick somebody that we can work with. I like that idea. And this new manager says, hey, you know, this new city council, you know, hired me. Let me work with them. And not He'll work with the that's 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 council members can do. Absolutely, it's their okay. job. It's well, their job to do it. Yeah, it's their job to do it. So well, and maybe think, a take well, that. We, we, you know, we, <laughs> check on his ass. It's been a house sweeping, so we need to really clean up. Let's clean house. Yeah. Yeah. Let's clean house. You know. Let's just clean house. And and I think, look, the the new Austin City Council is still going to be Democrat leaning. Come on, it's a Democrat city. Right. But my argument is, look, all these new council members, they've made promises to their voters and there are issues and problems in these separate neighborhoods give yourself some authority to get problems fixed right to keep your promises to voters best way to do that clean house bring in a new city manager mm -hmm. that makes sense mm -hmm. so why, sense. why keep it as a city uh, city manager type of government why not have give the mayor more responsibility as opposed to have the city manager man that's a great question I just you just queued that thing up man and i'm just sitting there at the, the bat and ready for that See, what and here comes when we text Okay. No, he didn't text me either. I didn't pay him to say it. It's just all no, good. These two are texting, see? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so I got to start with uh, what kind of city government does Detroit have? They got a strong. They got a strong mayor. It's broke. Yeah. I mean, it's broke, and they got a strong mayor. And and I think what happened in Detroit, and it's happened in other cities too. You, you get a guy that that stands up and he's going to run for mayor, and he says, "Hey, why don't I come up with a." pension plan for the government employees. How about if you re retire with 200000 a year? That sounds like a pretty good deal. I'm going to vote for that guy. So they'll make these big outlandish promises. Uh, they go ahead and get, get elected, and then they saddle us up with unsustainable pension plans or whatever else it is. They're in there for four years, ten years, and then they hit the trail. Right. We don't know where that guy is that made all these promises that we can't keep now. <laughs> so, I don't know, but I sure want one of them jobs. <laughs> I want one of the retirement plans. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Retire like that? Yeah. I'll Can we just skip that. to the retirement? Exactly. <laughs> if you work for the mayor's campaign, yeah, probably so. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I don't know. We need to we need to talk about that some more and think about it some more because right? I don't think it's a cure all, mm -hmm. but it's worth discussing. Now, it, you know this saying that the devil's in the details. Yeah. yeah. I think that depends on that that too. But let's let's say. Let's let this, the new city council prove 
that we can work with the system we got now. Mm -hmm. and, and then if the evidence comes out, you know, the city manager model just doesn't work for us at all, then later, you know, let's have that discussion. Cool. But I think right now, uh, that would be a lot of changes happening at one time, wouldn't it? Right. You know, oh, yeah. Did, you True. Know, so let's try to replace the city manager, well, we try to change. make that work. <laughs> yeah. And no well, change. well, at least most of the city council members, they're, they're There's going that to be the hope and change. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, every two years, some yeah. of the city council is going to be up for election every two years. Right? Oh, yeah. There's that, too. Two yeah. more yeah. years, it's going to be half the city council. Yeah, half of that. Every two years and not four? Well, no, no. Four year terms, but half the council. They have to stagger them. It's going to be staggered. They have to stagger them. So Y'all there's five unlucky, which? five unlucky people that are going to be running again <laughs> in two years. In two years, yeah. We ain't figured out which one's going to be. I guess not. We ain't nope. elected them yet. No, you haven't elected them yet, and you're going to have to draw, and you hope that the drawing is fair. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Hmm. Go ahead, Mike. I know you yeah. got something to say. Oh no, no, we have to wait till January for that one. Yeah, that comes in January. Yeah. Yeah. That was a That's great question. Cool. Uh, was that answer okay? That or works. Was, that works for me. I, okay. I, I just have my personal opinions about city management. About and yours is? I don't, I'm not a big fan of city manager. You're not a fan? Of, you'd no. rather see a strong mayor model? Or? I'd rather have, yeah, I'd rather have the people that are supposed to be held accountable, yeah. to be held accountable for, for all their actions. You're right. Yeah. And Can't argue uh, with and, that. And seeing several cities where they had the city manager, they mm. put the city into massive room. But that's just me. And, and of course, yeah. I mean, look, we'll, look what happened. Look yeah, it, it can here. work both ways. You're yeah. right. It, yeah, yeah. yeah so. So. If that's, you that's get the wrong good. people in there, you're screwed. True. Well, no matter what model you have, you get the wrong people in there, you're in trouble. So. That is so true. So, so how's how's it going now that now that you are officially in the runoff? I mean, we we had we, we talked about this just a little bit ago, where it was actually going to be a three-way race. Uh, one of the gentlemen who, who uh, came in uh, in, the, in in contention, which is Jay Riley, um, backed out. So now it's you and, and uh, I guess Flanagan or Jimmy right. Flanagan. Jimmy Flanagan. Yeah. So how 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 has that been going on? Obviously, it's. Still fresh. Yeah, it's, it's still fresh, and I took a took a few days off. We went up to Seattle, so I've been out of town. So I, I've been playing catch up on wow, my nice. emails and phone calls. Nice. Yeah, we, we had a, we had a really really good time up there. Here's another weird thing that happened. People don't realize how dependent we are on these stupid devices oh, yeah. here. Yeah. Yes. So I had a I had an Android phone right that I bought about three and a half years ago, and I, you know I'm an engineer, I'm a geek and a nerd, so I, mm -hmm. I know about these guys. So uh, I've actually built. The I code that comes in an Android. Got a big one but me. Yeah, yeah, no, don't let me don't let me touch that. And so then it's been working okay for uh, uh, three and a half years, and then about ten minutes before the polls closed on November fourth, seriously, like ten minutes before, it was in my pocket and I, I felt this thing buzzing. You know, bzz, bzz, you know, I take it out and it's black and I'm like, well, that's not good. And so I reset it, take the battery out, and it's completely bricked, sitting in my pocket. And I'd been using it all day, texting, you know, this back, and it just bricked. So I didn't exist on election night. Oh, Everybody's no. calling my phone. I'm not there. Right? Oh, yeah. no. And I'm like, what the heck's wrong oh, with Zimmerman? Oh, time to go out. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that? Ten minutes before polls mm. closed. And they're like, well, Zimmerman never fails oh, to pick up the phone, no, so that's a terrible. message. He's sending us a message. He didn't want to talk to us. <laughs> no, the message is my phone's broken. I can't talk. Oh, no. So I went and got this new Galaxy uh, S5, I guess. You know, and and AT&T couldn't do anything with the phone. I let mm. their geeks come in. They couldn't do anything. I lost a bunch of contact data. Mm. And I was behind, so I've been playing catch up for nearly a week, and I'm pretty much caught up now. But then I figured out a lot of the people I met on the campaign trail, their contact info is gone. Uh. Mm. So I, w I was probably resynchronized to maybe two or three months ago, but I lost a lot of data, and that, that hurts too. Oh, I know yeah. that does hurt. So, uh, wow. so how it's going, uh, yeah, we're getting ready to ramp up. We've had a lot of people. Um, that I asked for donations before, mm -hmm. and I didn't get them, and now the checks are just showing up in the mail. Wonderful. So I, yeah, I say thanks. Hey, thanks. You know, so. That's good. Yeah, it's good. It's very good. So money's coming in. Great. More volunteers are coming in. You know, people are responding. So we're really well, excited. Well, Gabriel donated some pizza for you, so. Oh, I appreciate that. That was your pizza, huh? All right, <laughs> appreciate that. Hey, what do you get from us? I mean, you know. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's awesome. <laughs> well, cool, 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 cool. So, so tell us a little bit about what. Why did Why did people vote for you? I mean, what do, you, what do you think was the reason why people voted for you? I think it was the, the record, the stuff that I'd done, um, really, just the record. Uh, my, I, look, I don't wanna, I'm not saying anything bad about Jay Wiley. He's a decent guy. Mm -hmm. He worked really, really hard. He did. The thing is, he put, he put on his uh, campaign signs, on his four bites, he put uh, a new voice for taxpayers. That was his tagline, his slogan on the signs. It's a new voice for taxpayers. And I, and I thought, well, what was wrong with the voice that's been here for 13 years in mm -hmm. the same place in the same house? What new voice would be better than the only voice that won an illegal taxation lawsuit against the city of Austin? You know, save your taxpayers $18 million and yeah. abolish a property tax 
why would you want to be new? Why, why not go with a proven with the, commercial, with the commercial actually came out pretty cool. Oh, you like the commercial? Uh, that, that commercial that, that, uh, that you were airing? The out. little commercial with the hat? Yes. The, yeah, you like that? So. That was pretty good. Well, we ran that. We ran, you know, I was, again, I was following my own advice from my book. <laughs> so what I write in my book, and the advice I say is, look, s spend some campaign dollars early before the airwaves get saturated with all these TV ads and everybody tunes out. Mm -hmm. So we ran our TV ads the last week of September, mm. which was about three weeks, three and a half weeks, prior to early voting. Mm -hmm. And we ran those ads for about one week, kind of kind of pushed them in there. And so when I walked up to people's doors, and I did knock on a couple thousand doors, but, but I'd, I'd walk up there and knock on the door and they would open the door. I know you, I saw you on TV. And it, <laughs> another guy is out there mowing his grass and he saw me walk up and he points to me and says, I know you, I saw you on TV. So, so it was a, a effective way to introduce yourselves to voters before you show up. We also put our four by eight signs out early, and, but but I have I had credibility to start with. You know, I have all this proven track record of working hard for taxpayers. That's so. what I was going to throw in there. I've known you since like uh, 2002. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I know about you some before that. My first trip, of course, I go back to like '94. Wow. Well, the CHL and Bill Clinton. You figure you know it used to be guns was my one issue, but with Bill Clinton, you got to you got to broaden out a little bit. <laughs> Not to, you know, I didn't, really didn't think it'd get worse than Bill Clinton. I really didn't. Well, they said it couldn't get worse than Jimmy Carter, but they were wrong. They were wrong. Yeah, they were wrong. And now yeah. I was wrong. <laughs> but anyway, I know you've been around a long been time. Been around a long time. I've got oh. a really, really good picture. I really like of you and uh, Rosemary Edwards at Travis County Commissioner's Court one day. Huh. We were down, this was years ago. Years ago, yeah. Huh. And y'all are sitting there going over some paperwork, and I just snapped. Sometimes you get these pictures. You yeah, know? yeah. Huh. You know, when I wasn't so restricted, I used to get around pretty good. Mm. And I used to throw my camera in people's faces, and I threw too much camera in, in you mm. and Rosemary's face. Well, one it time worked that time, though, it sounds like. I yeah, probably have worked. a picture or two with Don. Yeah, we had some, you, well when too. you ran, I think we had yeah. a photo or two. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, the other, the other thing that helped you me was know. the fact that uh, I've lived in the same home mm -hmm. for 15 years mm -hmm. since I moved here in 2000. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jay Wiley had lived uh, in another precinct, and he moved in November, about November, roughly. I don't know, sometime late last year. And then, because of that goofy uh, uh, limited district stuff over in River Place, it turns out that limited district in the city of Austin, it, limited annexation. Yes. It doesn't qualify you to run. So exactly. then Jay had to get an apartment in Williamson County and say, well, that's my residence for voter registration. So that was February of 2014, the voter registration. And that made it and hard. That made, that made it hard, yeah. Because waiting for it, redistricting to happen, then yeah. when it finally did, we were like, what? What? You right. Know, how could so, I not be? <laughs> well, he could have run in the place that he was living, mm -hmm. but District 6 was the only kind of Republican-drawn district. Gotcha. So maybe that's bad luck, but I call it the hand of Providence, right? You, you don't know where those lines are going to get drawn. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting there, and I, when I saw those lines, I said, are you kidding me? You drew a city council district that put me where I've been living for 15 years. just right in the middle of it, <laughs> literally. You look at a map, and, and my house is just right in the middle of that crescent, you know. <laughs> so right. that was interesting. So I thought that was the hand of Providence there so for me. And it didn't help Jay that he'd moved in recently. And I guess I'm older. I'm 54, and Jay was 38. <laughs> uh, I'm an engineer. He's an attorney. Oh, there they go. But that was another thing. But you know what I said in a funny little thing I did? I said, you know what? Uh, when it comes to growing a handsome beard, I, I can't do it. Jay Wiley, man, that guy's got a really good beard, and I, I can't do cool, it. His fa he, he's, he and his family are very nice They're nice people. people. They're good people. They, yeah. they are good people. They're good so people. Yeah. We'll see what he does for yeah, the next good time people. around. Yeah. I think they did a good, they ran a good race. They ran a hard race. It would be good to get the lawyers out of city council, all right? Except yeah. for my Democrat lawyer lady that I voted for. I voted. <laughs> people people did say that. They said, you know, let's put an engineer, a technical problem solver. That's, it, yeah, or be good, something you know. besides lawyers all the time. Yeah. Well, we really need somebody with some common sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, that's what it takes. I mean, for some passion to, you know, if, if you if you don't want to, if you don't want, if you don't want to experience things that are happening in this city, how you feel others, you know, feel. I mean, so sometimes it takes some common sense to just really, especially when it comes to balancing the budget. If we have to balance our budget at home, why come city manager can't balance the Or budget? pay the price if we don't. Pay the price if you don't, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just yeah. not right. Yeah. So, Don, if you get in there, don't be trying to spend the money. 
trying to figure out where it's going first of all and then save as much as we can. Well, how about a resolution starting out to say, look, for the new city council, let's have a 3% cut in that Austin city budget. 3%, that's not a big deal, but it's a cut. I mean, less money than we spent last year. Let's do a 3%. Cut. How can 3% hurt you? But you know what? They're going to scream and yell and holler. About that. You know, they're, they're going to want a 3% or a 5% increase, right? And we're saying, no, you've been doing that for the last 10, 15 years. And so we're going to say, when you need more money, don't take it from the city of Austin electricity people well, to pay their light bills. There's Stop that too. Stop going to the light bill people. Uh, Stop doing it. Stop, there's that too. Stop, get it from, get it from the water. <laughs> I mean, every, ah, in the water, every, man. Every, uh, look, every yeah. failed project you yeah. do, and yeah. for peace' sake, listen. If you, why do you have to continue hiring these consultants to tell you that that idea you have is stupid anyway? You could just ask a normal person. Oh, why no, wait, 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 hang on. No, maybe half pay nice. somebody time out, time out, time so time out. much money. That's the, the reason you pay them a lot of money is because you pay them a lot of money so that they'll say that a stupid idea makes sense. That's why you have to pay them all that money. <laughs> you don't have yeah. to pay them nothing. You shouldn't have enough common sense yeah. to know, no, this ain't going to work. They just want to get you to run for office, girl. They, I mean, you should carry away. I mean, you, seriously. You run for city council. Yeah, you're right. It's you're right. crazy. It's crazy. Help me, you can, you can pay, yeah. pay the trailer park show. For half price, and we'll half do price? the consulting. Exactly. Well, now, you know, I'll get a better, better answer out of you. Yeah. And I will, those we'll guys. You guys just tell me the truth. Well, I'll get you to figure it out. Half stinks. price. Yeah. Actually, you know, you know what you guys? We'll do it for 1.2 million. I, I, actually, we'll do it for this. We'll half price. Uh, every, every afternoon, we'll go ahead about 4 or 5 o'clock. We'll go to your porch. We'll have some Cheetos and, and some wine. Cheetos and, some and wine. And then we'll have a discussion, about, a roundtable discussion as to how to fix it. You know what? You know what? We could have saved a whole Half bunch price. of money if they came to the trailer park show and said, is this urban rail a good idea? <laughs> yeah. You would have said no <laughs> for what? That. About a thousand bucks? And we could have saved a few million. Put on that Matthew stupid Grant campaign, all the studies, it's well, all bogus. You know? By the time... Now, whoever writes the check <laughs> should have arthritis. <laughs> oh, man. Because that's a lot of check writing. It was a lot and of check writing. you know writing. what? I'm it sick a lot and of check tired writing. of it. Yeah. Well, I, I agree that it is. Well, yeah. that's some of the outrageous fee, $100,000 yeah. for, for one day's worth of consulting. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. How in the hell do I get one of these jobs? <laughs> exactly. I mean, to just tell you rights, I'll do it. Yeah. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. It's so simple. Uh. <laughs> Well, I got, I got a couple of other questions. Yeah. Okay, we're, I'm looking at your website over here. Okay. It says uh, Austinites uh, for Zimmerman.com, and there's a hyphen between uh, Austinites and uh, yeah. Austinites hyphen for hyphen Zimmer, uh, Zimmerman. Well, it also works with DonZimmerman.org. We got a couple of. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah Excellent. Yeah. We redirect, Excellent. redirected a bunch of URLs. Oh, there you uh, go. Excellent. So yeah. we're, at, we're at your website here. Um, tell us a little bit about the Homestead uh, Exemption Resolution. I called it the Presley plan. Yes. Uh, Laura I was Presley. At, I was looking yeah. at that and no. I'm like, wow. Yeah, no, Laura Presley was the first one to put that out there. And mm -hmm. she put up some documentation for how you would pay for it. And it's not hard to pay for. Right. You know, it's not a lot of money. When you look at the, the, the staggering amount of money that the city of Austin spends, it's not that much. Uh, I, I don't even remember what it is now. You can read it off there and tell me. It was the Presley plan. I just put up what she put out and said, you know, we got to do this 20%. Homestead exemption. This is common sense, what you're talking about. Because the other taxing entities are doing it. Why isn't Austin doing it? Even the school the school district, right, gives you these homestead exemptions. Mm -hmm. And they're the biggest bite of your taxes. So why can't the city do it? It's common sense. So I put up, I said, hey, Laura Presley put that out there first. I'm going to tag on and say, good job. You, go, you way to go. Yeah. So, so you're for it. So you're of course. For yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I go into homestead exemptions? Uh, Gavino, at that, at that press conference, oh, no, no uh, Laura Presley was there. Hmm. He had two receipts from elderly people who had been living there forever, and it was something, something like $6,000, and I'm only living in this little shack, you know? Uh, what's the dirt? You see how they price the dirt on those things? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's why he's almost a millionaire. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I can't give you, though. Know, he got two old shacks out there. You know, you're half a million dollars. That's <laughs> paying taxes huh? on half a million dollars worth of property. Mm. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Some of these elderly people out there, especially yeah. on the, you know how it is. They've been yeah. there forever. Yeah. Been there forever, yeah. And, yeah. and and then they fall for this uh, yeah. exemption thing they have, and so they sign off, and when they croak, the city, uh, whoever whoever gave them the, the break gets their house. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, it goes to the, you want to uh, uh, let your kids inherit it? Well, okay, this is how much you owe. Mm. Because oh, they cover your taxes the all the time. You're talking about the reverse. Are you talking about the reverse mortgage? No, it's a... Uh, 
Uh, Community Reinvestment Act stuff. Government sponsored stuff. I don't even know what that is. Community Reinvestment Act? Well, I heard of it, but I don't know. Yeah. It is. It's a government sponsored. One of these, uh, some, some, uh, somebody got paid lots and lots of money to figure this out. Lawyers. Hmm. Hmm. With briefcases. (laughs) And these old people over there. Well, okay, I can just sign here and I don't pay no more taxes. (sighs) Ten years later when they die and the kids say, okay. And they say, well, you owe this much money. Yeah. Mm. And if they can't pay it, they lose the house. And guess you got to sell the house uh, to pay uh, for it uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. A, a big high rise go right in yep. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Gentrification. Yep. I don't like what's happened to our city. Yeah. I mean, I was born and raised in this city, and yeah. I just don't like the things that are happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can, can I go a little further? Uh, I, I don't know if I should talk about Susanna or not, but she bragged about all these things they accomplished. And I asked her, do you take any responsibility for what's happening? For the problems? She says, no. Yeah, no. She's got no clue. Everything she pushed, she got, and this is what it led to. Yeah, this is what it led to. And you're exactly right. Yep. Marilyn, this is not a good place. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, Johnson High School is completely collapsed. Yep. Uh, The East Side Burial is gone. It ain't coming back. And all those old people that live there? They're going to pass away, and the property's going to go to some it's developer be, uh, for high density. Yeah. Before you know it. Before you know it, yeah. And I'm then that'll price out the rest of the people that are, that are, that well, are that, That's also a good example yeah. of these, these things could sound so, a community reinvestment act. Mm. That sounds great. <laughs> Everybody's for community. What you say, right? the devil's in the details. Devil's, the devil's in the details. And yeah. a lot of these people don't yep. bother to read that fine print. Yeah. Or don't understand what it says. I don't understand yeah. what it says. Well, and it could yeah. be some quick money up front. Yeah. You know, well, I can take it. I can redo yeah. my house. Yeah. Whatever I need. My child this needs some money to do this, do that. But in mm. the end, and the fine print is not going to benefit, and that's not right. Yeah, it's like that reverse mortgage plan, but mm. for, for poor people mm-hmm. who just have no idea. They have no clue. It's, it's, they're getting out from underneath this terrible tax burden. That's all they know. Mm. And look what happens. Well, so I'm, you're not going to fall for none of that, I hope. <laughs> you try to do something to help these people out or... I don't know how do I make that into a question. How do you make that into a question? Well, you've done a good job <laughs> in the question so far. So can you reverse it, kind what, of stuff? What, somehow, well, or? what we've done is we, we've gotten into this mess incrementally. Yeah. And the the twenty percent homestead exemption is a start. Another thing that's forced us into this mess is the subsidies for the big corporations. Right. Yeah. And that was one of the questions I was going to ask ah, about next. So I put I put that on my uh, on my website. See, one of my points was to say I'm going to introduce if I can get on the council, I'm going to introduce an ordinance. And it's based on the idea of the 14th Amendment in the Constitution. Equal protection under the law. What could be more unequal than saying, hey, Apple Computer, world's richest corporation, here's a handout <laughs> <laughs> taxpayers' money. I'm sick yeah, and tired I'm sick of that. On the backs of our small businesses yes. and homeowners. Yeah. What? Yeah. I like to use Samsung Crazy, as the you know? example. And I kind of like that. They well, help okay. Samsung so, out for now. So, so would the proposal be that it's eliminated across eliminated the board, across the or, board or would you be in favor of having which is something i think we talked okay. about previously where we say okay instead of just big businesses any business that raleigh durham is offering it they're going to move then it. move to raleigh durham we don't okay. want we, <laughs> we have a traffic problem here move the the the, the water is running low in the lake right the lake's running dry 40 feet you know 40 feet down just go ahead and move to north carolina but leave the water behind Okay. Well, Which they're going to do. And the you know, thing of it is, is that Austin is a prime place. It's a beautiful if, place. If they're going to move here anyway. People, yeah. would, exactly. They're going to so move here anyway. Yeah, you don't have to pay them to come Exactly. Here. You don't have to pay them to move here. Thank you. Thank you. Do we do fist bumps here? Yeah. Right, see that? Yeah. You don't have to pay them nothing. You don't have to pay them nothing. Right. I mean, and it ain't your money anyway. You can give them an exemption. After two or three years, they start paying all those taxes. They hired all these people. Do you talk? get her to run for office? Well, I do want to ask my question. While you're out there on the campaign trail, yeah. what were some of the what were some of the things you were hearing? What were some of the complaints your constituents were saying? I mean, the constituents out there were saying to you. Number about one, angry about being annexed against their will. Well, yeah. Number one, angry about getting annexed against their will. Uh, yeah. Mike, is that some of the stuff you heard? Some some of the same things you heard when you yeah. were out there on the that trail. That and, and gentrification was a big was a big issue, and you just have to you know you have to kind of translate that and, and show them how you know, how that's really affecting them and how they can change it and stuff like that. But yeah, that was a big deal. No, did also your district cover 12th also. Street, 11th Street, Main Road? 11th Street and then going north on the east side of 35 and then all the way up to Pflugerville, but then bypassed the Mueller. 
Mm, by so those people are, yeah. I'm just pointing out some places where all yeah. lots of gentrification yeah. has happened. Where this is a new city, right. really, yeah. it's a people, new city. Because you have people that are, you know, your older generation that are still in those homes, they're mm. having problems with the property taxes, yeah. and they, mm. they're, they're worried about, you know, let's why don't take we that paper. Yeah, why don't we <laughs> fix the infrastructure? How about getting sidewalks? How about getting lights? You know, not bike lanes. Thank you. Well, yeah, new yeah, people yeah. moving in. Those new people want the bike lanes. The older people that are there don't want the bike lanes. They don't lanes. want the bike lanes, yeah. So. yeah. As yeah. crowded as this city is, you're talking about some our infrastructure. I mean, who can afford to tear it down, uh, take away another lane, lane, and put a bike lane there? Right. They're yeah. doing it all over the place, too. Exactly. I, got, I got a lot of complaints of that out in, of all places, the old Anderson Mill mud. People ticked off, you know, because they had a big, wide, two lane. And, and one of the guys that moved in here says, Yeah, I moved in here in the 1980s. No, I love those wide streets there. And they came in and they carved them up, and now there's one little narrow thing for cars, man. East William <laughs> Cannon is, is, yeah. our, is ours. East William oh. Cannon, I used to love those wide lanes too, my old dump truck. I could just swerve yeah. all around. Okay, so, and, I, and I really wonder how much money did it take to put them bike lanes in. Okay, I mean, so, that was crazy. So what I, what I came up, what I was telling people in the campaign trail and in forums is, at least at Ranch Road 620 area we have out mm -hmm. in the Northwest, people are biking for recreation and exercise. Mm -hmm. Lord knows we need exercise. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Get them off the road and put them into our open spaces. We've got all these open spaces. Mm -hmm. We should have bike, you know, no motorized stuff, right? Just bikes, recreational stuff going through the green space. How cool is that? Beautiful. Yeah, cool. well, we got Beautiful. And get them parks. off the road. If, if they're, <laughs> off, they're off the road, you can't hit them with a car. If we got yeah. dog parks, we can have a bike we park. We can have bike parks. And, you know, <laughs> biking. And then though I think actually those exercise lanes, like if you put one from Ranch Road 620 that went all the way down to 360, mm -hmm. you could cut through there and you could actually get faster on a bike than you could yeah. on a car. Hey, you got to put <laughs> it there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I wouldn't even want to ride on 620 on a bike. Yeah, I, I don't either, man, because I drive it every day and I it's mean, dangerous exactly. out there. And I'm afraid I'm going to hit one of those guys. I, man, when I'm on 620, I'm like, where is he? Where's that biker? You know, like, <laughs> it's, it's serious. It's better you know? when you had to go across the dam. Oh, that was even scarier. Yeah, how about, how about a, a biker? Bit. How about a biker up on top of the dam? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Death yeah, wish, yeah. death wish. So, yeah. what, so what other people were? What, what were the people talking about in your area? I mean, you obviously you mentioned about the, the annexation. They were unhappy about the annexation. Everybody's complaining about the traffic, of course. Right. You know, the traffic congestion, the uh, the 183 North going on the 620. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess the utility rates came up too, because what see what happens in the annexation is you had muds out here, mm -hmm. generally several mm -hmm. muds and. Uh, the mud charges a tax. It's like a city tax. It's a municipal tax, right? Mm -hmm. it's, kind of, it's a substitute city. It does fewer things. But water, wastewater, yes, that's the main deal it does. Maybe garbage pickup, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're used to paying a certain water bill. And these muds are bought generally. They're buying water wholesale from the Austin mm -hmm. water utility. They buy it wholesale, and then they, you know, they do whatever they do. They distribute it, uh, and they send bills to the... But, but the people look at their bills and they're You're like... You're an engineer. You know what they do. I know what they do, man. <laughs> I was on a mud. I was a president of the mud. You know, I know something about it. So they get their water bill and they're like, yeah, okay. City of Austin comes in mm. and the guy goes, wait a minute. It's the same water, same pipes, mm. same everything. And now my bill is four times higher. Well, and they're ticked. Why that, wouldn't they be? You know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, but it's not just that. Here's what I've been arguing and, and people are going to try to get me in trouble for this. Bring it on. Uh, local Government Code, Chapter 43, Annexations. That's, that's the law that governs annexation. And so the law says, uh, it's actually, I think it's Section 56, actually Paragraph G, and it says, pretty much in black and white, you don't have to be a lawyer, you just read it. And it says that the city has to provide the same or better level of service than what you had before, before it can annex you. Now here's why this makes so much sense, right? We have some lousy muds out there. They're overcharging you, right? Their, their taxes are too high, they got crummy service, there's mud in the water, you know. People hate them because they're ripping you off. Water bills are too high. Now, if a city were to come in there and they said, all right, we're going to dissolve that mud, you're going to have a lower municipal tax bill, and we're going to reduce your water rates, or at least keep them the same and maybe lower them, and, and you'll get the same or better water, everybody's going to go for that deal, right? I don't need a vote. Everybody's going to go for that deal. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Sure. No need to have a vote. But here's what the city does. What the city does is come in, they jack up your taxes, they jack your water bills, and now they're in violation of this law. And then they say, well, we're not going to provide those services to you. Well, we're not going to, you know, I'm sorry, the law says that you will. And if you don't, you can't annex me. Okay, so they've done it. Now what do you do? Anybody here know there's a big section in the law titled disannexation? Nobody even knows it's there. But it's in there. You can read it. Disannexation. 
So what you can do to the city, if they violated the law, it's written in there. You can read it. You can go to court. You say, you know what? You violated that law. I want a disannexation election. And now we can vote. Now imagine, imagine how much better service and treatment you would get out of Austin if you could vote on whether you stay in or not. Thank you. Isn't that great? Now, yeah, what is, what is you have an Austin, Texas address. You have a Travis County address, but yet you can't vote. Because you can't vote? You, 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 Okay, but, but you could vote, and, and to have this disannexation election, you, you put it on there and say, all right, the city hasn't kept its end of the bargain. According to us, the taxpayers, we're the ones that matter. So you we're going to vote. We're going to get out. City? Yeah, we're going to get out. We're going to get out. And all you have to do is do that one time, and guess what? The city starts to treat you better because now they know you have an option. Okay, so well, I don't know. there it is. Lawyers. I said They'll it. just shoot you and bring you back in. Okay. So that, but if that happens, then District 6 would get smaller. Would get significantly smaller. It would get smaller. Redistrict it. Draw the lines again. <laughs> That'd be awesome. You know, yeah. I, look, I, yeah, and people, that, people always say that, city people, when we were going to sue the city of Austin for illegal taxes, you know, all these people and lawyers, telling, you can't do that, you can't do that, you know, you can't. You can't. What do you mean I can't do that? You know, right. let's do it. Yeah, they're lawyers. We had a lawyer that, uh, the, there was a lawyer that told me when I got to be president of the MUD, and she said, uh, I, was, I was giving her the water code. And I'm an engineer, not a lawyer, but I can read. So I read the water code, uh, chapter 54, section 16, paragraph F. So I just read it for her. And she goes, ah, that's not what that means. I said, what do you mean that's not what that means? <laughs> this is the English language, man. <laughs> it says you can't tax us like this. Well, that's not what that means. So the contract is legal, and there's nothing you can do about it. I said, yes, there is. We can get you fired, and we'll bring in a new legal team that can read. And they'll agree with us, and then we'll sue the city of Austin. So that's what we did, and we won. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody said you can't do it. Yes, you can do it. Uh oh, I just said yes, you can. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> no, if you said she's a weather, then they'd be. You'd be real, <laughs> yeah, you'd be in real trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, now keep in mind, I'm the one that said it, not him. <laughs> you know, in case anybody wants to try to say anything, you know, it was me. <laughs> All right. Now you've had some great questions here. Um, Cool. So I anything can go else? back to my, yeah. I, I'm the, the more uh, uh, low info voter. Um, I'd like to stick with basic city services. Okay. We assure me that when I flush that toilet, it's going to be taken care of properly. We got water project, uh, what was that, water treatment? Water, plant water treatment plant four? What's the matter with that? It's We're overbuilt. Water. No, it's overbuilt. It's overbuilt. There, there are some good reasons to build water treatment plant four. I'll give you a couple. Good reasons to build it. For one, it diversifies your water source. It's upstream of that Mansfield Dam, right? So if you had a jihad bozo that flies in an airplane loaded up with some kind of poison and he, and he, and he crashes in Town Lake and he poisons the water. Mm. Well, you can suck some fresher water out of, out of the tree. Lake Travis up, you know, upstream, right? Okay. Make you fly out there next time. Make him fly out there, yeah. Work harder for it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, just shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then the other, the other nice thing about water treatment Don't plant no spores <laughs> location is that uh, you, you pump the water up before you treat it. Yeah. But after you treat it, now it's, it's up here at a higher level. It flows down downhill, down. and you save the money of having to pump water. Water is really heavy, mm -hmm. dense. It's hard to pump it. It costs a lot of money to pump that water around. So if it flows downhill, that's cool. You can save money because everybody knows Austin Energy Electric bills are through the roof. That's you don't want to be paying those. That's because we got to have those, those uh, okay. yeah, we can go into that too. Uh, yeah. We got to have those, what's that, bio diversity? Uh, don't get me started on that. But to finish the water treatment plant for yeah. the problem is that they built, they overbuilt it. It has a capacity, when it's fully built out, it has a capacity of uh, around 350 million gallons per day. That's a lot. We mm -hmm. only use 175 million. Today. Today, and we have two two plants to provide that 175 million. But tomorrow, peak. after we keep giving tax breaks to these companies, we're going to need that mu that water because all these people are going to come in here. But it's, that's not, not that's going to take so. that's going to take decades. It's going to take decades, decades and decades. And by, and by the time by the time the city's built out to where it could use the capacity of water treatment plant four, guess what? The plant's going to be obsolete, <laughs> right? Because that's going to be like 40 years. Mm. Yeah. So they overbuilt it, and here's the problem with overbuilding it. You have to pay for what you're overbuilt and you can't use. So what, about 40% of your water bill is paying the debt, uh -huh. right, on, on this infrastructure that we can't use because they overbuilt. They overbuilt. Right, right. So this is bad management. That's all what, it is. Uh, uh, what, what bad about management. wastewater? Uh -huh. Are we okay there? I don't, I'm not an expert on the wastewater. But you're an engineer. Uh, I am. Everybody uses it. 
I am, but you know what? I know about 2% of what I need to know yeah. to be on the city council. I'm at about 2% right now. I'm about 2%. Now, hold on. Okay. There's no landfill. You don't know about 2%. landfills. I'm not up on the landfills either. Or wastewater. Not up on the landfills or the wastewater. Not up on those yet. Street and bridge uh, department. Anyway, we can, we can, can we reduce the cost of operating some of these departments somehow and still get the service? The answer, is, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. But it's going to take probably a change ideas. of management. You know, right people are calling for an audit. Great idea. Let's audit these departments. And the auditors need to answer to the elected city council, not to the entrenched city government. They need they to answer are. to the elected city council. Mm -hmm. And then when we do those audits, we'll, we'll, we're going to find some top-heavy management. There's going to be all kinds of stuff that we can cut if the city council has the will to do it, which I hope they do. We need six votes. Right. I'm one of them. But I... I We'll have to see what happens, but I think we can make a powerful argument. The people, the people are ticked off, and it's not it's not Republican Democrats, it's not East Austin West. Everybody's being taxed out of their homes, and so we're we're demanding some cost cutting, and I think we're going to get it. It's Austin nice. yeah. We're we're tired. We're tired of it. We're yeah. sick and tired yeah. of it. And then that's so. enough. Bicycles. Yes, we already talked about bicycles. Ma hates bicycles. bicycles. I didn't send that to him. Yeah, we. Oh, no, you did. No, we do me. have. Put the bicycles um, in the green space. There you go. Yeah. Get them off the road. Green space. Now we know this. Uh, now we understand this Friday you are um, having a debate. Or to yeah, let's off, uh, talk oh. about some of your stuff. At Pokey Joe's. Yeah, Pokey, Pokey Joe's. Pokey Joe's. Same place we were a couple of weeks back. Remember? Okay. Oh, down there south. Pokey Joe's. Uh, yeah, Pokey Joe's 4109 South uh, Capital yeah. of Texas. Uh, we're gonna forum down there. They're not gonna do like multiple debates like they did. They are already doing are it. Yeah, serious? they're already doing it. So how many it? debates oh will you be God. going into with this one that, that, that you're aware of? I've already got about four of them on the calendar. Are you serious? But yeah, but we're going to have to, and I told my that's campaign gonna, team, yeah, it, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. Well, no, here's yeah, what happened. Here's, when in, in the first round, the, the early forums were very well attended. And then after you got past the early round, we started to notice tapering off. And it's the mm -hmm. same people going from forum. S same forum. people, but and fewer people. And by the time we got close to election, nobody was going to the forum. Right. So what, what we're going to say is, look, let's get these forums over with early, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, let's get them done, and then we're just going to stop going to them because we got to reach out to our voters. Yeah. You know, you got to go to your voters. Mm -hmm. right. Well, what you know how to do that, don't you? Beer equals votes. Oh, God. Have a pachanga. Votes. There you go. Have a pachanga. There you yeah, go. Yeah, there you go. No problem. He's trying to help you. Pokey Joe will say, yeah, we did it. Come on down. <laughs> it, 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 no, wait, wait. that's just your excuse to go ahead and go. <laughs> but that's just me. I'm just, that's, that's what just... grass Is that in the district? Mm -hmm. It's what my district? Pokey Joe. Oh, no. That's oh, way. Okay. No, that's, so. that's nowhere that's close down. to me. It'll be down that's on. That's nowhere uh, close to me. So why that's down by. Uh, that's, just, that's just where the club meets. That's just where the, the club has been meeting. Uh, uh, you know. uh, right. We used to meet that same Never group. Mind. That same group two years ago was meeting at that uh, place over at Burnett Dean 183. Wright. Mm -hmm. oh. Dean Wright's group, right? No, it's a different no. group. No, it's a, he, different, it's a different group. Yeah, it's a different group. Yeah. Well, Dean, it's, it's Dean Wright's got one going on yeah, too, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, but this, he's, one, this one's sponsored by the Central Texas RLC. RLC, oh. yeah. Republican Liberty Caucus. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's happening uh, Friday. So, yeah, it would be good if people could come out. It'll be, it'll be interesting. It'll be fun. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So, so you're looking at what four of them total, or? You... Well, I think I got four booked right now. Yeah. No free beer in any of them. I don't think so. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Pokey. Like but if you come by our campaign head. office, you come by our campaign office. Oh, so five minutes. We'll, we'll buy. We'll, they'll get you a beer. We'll hey, get you a beer. You come come talking. Come if you come talking on Sunday, four, yeah. four to five p.m., thirteen seventy a.m. Right. We talk about all things firearms. So listen to come and talk. Yeah. Yeah. Now's the time to do our. We we go off at fifty eight thirty to our announcements, okay. and you just did on one of them, okay. and our sponsors. Central Texas Gun Works. Yeah. Keeping America and also Austin, Texas safe. And far. <laughs> and they got a real good comedy show on Saturday nights. That's right. Oh, no, I was it's impressed. The it's the second Saturday of the month. We do Guns and Giggles. Guns and Giggles. Oh, huh? it's not every Saturday? <laughs> the second Saturday of the month, Guns <laughs> and Giggles. And then there you are. Uh, B-Force and Media. I think I'm the only concealed you. handgun oh, license ooh. holder that was running in district. Running in District 6. I was only Let CHL guy. You don't have one? I thought everybody I had one. Get me one. Gotta get you one. And we got some breaking news, too. Uh oh, go ahead. Uh, Justice Sotomayor uh, blocked the Kansas gay marriage. Oh, yeah, and oh, she's, really? a, she's an Obama appointee. Huh. So we're after the election. So it's on the back. Huh? Liberals yeah. strike again. Uh oh, should we go for a marijuana or a gay question to him if it crosses your desk? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, These channels have been talking about this legislative session. One of them is one of my things I'd love to see. 
open case. Oh. And the other yes. one is to get married this year in Texas. Hold on, while you're here, Mom, besides the bicycles, let's ask him flat out. This place has been here a long time, Channel Austin. It's had its ups and downs. Yeah. If it crosses your desk and an opportunity to help this stay in business, would you help us? Uh, I would definitely help it because I was part of it years ago. You but I want to let me look at those numbers. But I, I want it to be here. It's a, it's this you thing is a voice. This thing is a voice for political liberty. I, I like this. You place. can ask anything you want down here. It's it's a good place, and we could figure out a way to make it earn some more money. I know they got some rules about this, that, and the other, but there's yeah. some stuff we can do to make this place a little more profitable, well, right? Unfortunately, so unfortunately, one yeah. of those those ways is they can rent out like this studio is for rent. And if you rent it out, we're off the air for that night. But that wouldn't hurt your feelings all that much, would no. it? Give you a day no, off, but man. No, the but problem it, it if they had done it tonight, you wouldn't have been here. Well, that wouldn't hurt my feelings either. <laughs> <laughs> I like you guys, but we'll have another show. <laughs> See, we could, just, a lot, man. we could just go have a beer, man. I go buy you a beer. Yeah, yeah. I buy you a beer and we could talk. And, you know, well, that, that is good and, because I, too, agree that this is a community yeah. resource. Yeah. We'll try to keep it. I'd like to. Yeah. Like we should try to keep it. That is good. Well, we got a few minutes, a couple minutes left. So, if possible, uh, Mrs. Two and a half minutes. go ahead and uh, sell yourself one more time before. Uh, sell myself. Yes, sir, to the to the. You know, uh, was it that, Ronald that Reagan? Ronald Reagan said that uh, politics was the world's second oldest profession, but yeah. it looked an <laughs> awful lot like the first. <laughs> yeah, well, that, so I, there you go. Have at it. <laughs> I yeah, uh, I'm I'm not all that comfortable. I can say my website, right? Yes. DonZimmerman.org. Yeah, yeah. I thought we had it up yeah. there. Yes, we did. We do we have it up there? there? Yes, we do. I would like everybody to go to DonZimmerman.org. That's what I'd like. And I'm on Facebook, too. Uh, Austinites for Zimmerman is on Facebook. Excellent. Awesome. Thanks to... Oh, yeah, thanks. You guys are good, man. You did a good job. You put up really media, that. too. Right? Oh, there it is. Oh, we did that Austinites, Austinites, for Austinites for Zimmerman. Oh, there's all your stuff right there. It's all right there. You just go online, and then, of course, uh, my contact info is on there. People mm -hmm. can call me and ask any kind of individual questions. Excellent. I, I've had a couple people that, that call up, and I, you know, my cell phone rings, and I answer, and, and, and they... And they Say so they say who they are, and I said, "This is Don Zimmerman." And they go, "Really? What? It's it's you?" I said, "Yeah, it's me." What? What do you mean it's you? Nobody puts their number. Nobody ever answers their number. Yeah, they're all freaked out. All right, minute and a half. What do you want to say? Plug anything? No, we're good. We got this. Come Plug anything? It. We're gonna be back next week. That's for sure. Oh. Go and vote in go and vote. December. December 16th, right? December. Yeah, but this is December 1st. Oh, early voting is, yeah, December already 1st. December 1st. Early so voting is December 1st. Is it, so it's two weeks. Yeah, I guess two weeks. They usually give you one week one in a week. runoff, yeah. but this time they started December 1st. Wow, so yeah. that's good. Yeah. If there's a candidate that's running up, there's a runoff uh, race in your area for your district, go and vote. Go and vote. Early voting means you can vote anywhere. That's right, vote centers, and do your, uh, uh, do your research and vote your conscience. That's, That's what right. I tell people. Another thing I told people at the door, if you like a better candidate, go vote for them. Do your homework. You, you, you can know, do more than that. You can actually go help any of these candidates. You yeah. can help he's, candidates he's too. Not in your, uh, all these candidates can use help. That's right. Uh, just volunteer. That's right. You can right. do more than just vote. To, it's, it's to get out there. Anyway, folks, we, we'll be back next week. And I would like to uh, thank you for tuning in, all six of you. <laughs> I Thanks for having me well, on. Well, no, we had 13, but actually, actually it was 14, but Stop then the it. international person went offline for a while. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we want to thank everybody for being here. Mr. Yeah. Zimmerman, thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, thank you, John. Poku, Thanks. thank you again. Uh, Michael Cargo Michael. from Te Central Woo -woo. Texas Gunwork. Yes. Woo -woo. You're here. Michael. And the lovely Miss uh, Marilyn Jackson. So until next week, we have another great show, brand new episode, and we will see you guys Monday. Yep. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.